Hey guys, Cube here, aka Mary Cagle, and I am going to talk about the concepts of aliasing and tolerance. And the main reason that I wanted to talk about this is because sometimes you get the question of, hey, I just tried to fill this guy like you would in one of your videos, but this is all effed up here. What's up with that? And so to understand exactly what's going on there and what to do about it, you have to understand what it means for something to be aliased or anti-aliased and how tolerance works in Photoshop. So if you're perfectly familiar with those things, you can probably skip this one. But I wanted to have a resource for people with that question. So let's talk about aliasing first. Basically, aliasing is a really complicated uh, thing to explain in terms of pure scientificness, but Basically, an aliased line will have visible pixels on the edge like this that are very hard. It's either it, it's binary, it's black or it's white, or it's you know red or it's white or whatever color you're drawing with. Basically, the key is this sharp edge here. Whereas anti-aliased lines, like you make with a brush tool, are nice and smooth and they kind of feather out and have um, variations of opacity whereas this is either on or off, period. So while this looks smoother when you're zoomed in, it's what causes this fill problem because your fill tool is going in and it's looking for colors that are the same and it's seeing all these fuzzies and so it's not filling there. So one way you can get around this is with the tolerance. And what tolerance does is it dictates exactly how much difference your fill tool will allow between different colors when it's filling. So basically, here's a pretty good way to look at it. So we've got this gradient here, right? And let's say we want to fill some of it with red. Now if my tolerance is set to zero, it will only fill pixels that are exactly the same color as the pixel I click on. Now. 250 is the maximum, and that means that it's just going to fill everything, because it's so very tolerant. So if you do something between there, like say 50, it will fill quite a few of the things. And then if I set it up to 90, even more are okay. So if I go back to this doggy, and then say I want to make him yellow, I have my tolerance set to mm, 170 it's going to fill much more, but obviously that's still going to look kind of like crap because I'm going over my lines. So since this is an image I scanned, what I would generally do is make a new layer for it, set that layer to multiply, and then make a layer below that for my flats. And then as long as my fill tool is set to all layers, bam, you have a nice smooth fill in the background. Dib -dib -dib. And with aliasing and anti-aliasing, you can also use that with your fill tool. So since I did not have anti-aliasing checked, you'll notice that my fill tool has all those very sharp lines. Whereas if I go back into it again with anti-aliasing checked, they're smoother. Though it's kind of hard to see against the pixelated background. But that's the basic idea of aliasing and tolerance, and that's how you can get decent fills. So if you notice that you are spilling over your lines, you can turn your tolerance down. If you notice that you are getting these fuzzy edges, you can turn your tolerance up and find a kind of sweet spot. Another thing that helps is if your line art is properly prepared, which is to say, let's bring in a random drowning. Here's a rabbit. Now, one of the reasons we're going to get a lot of problems filling this in, oops, I want to go the other way, I want to go to RGB, is because this is, well you've got all these like grayness here, you've got not quite black lines here, so as a little bonus, what we would, what I would generally do is use the levels tool and then choose my blacks and choose what I want to be white. And now I have much more clean sharp line art and that's going to be much easier to fill. Ba -ba. 
That does not look like a real bunny. That looks like a candy bunny, and I'm gonna eat it. But that's the general gist of it. Hopefully that was helpful for a few people, and if you have any other questions, just hit me up anytime. Thanks!